All right, let's uh, go ahead and get started with some uh, multi-step mole conversions. So you learned in the, the last podcast that the mole is essentially considered the central unit of chemistry. It, it, it's what allows us to keep track of atoms, and it also allows us to relate uh, one quantity um, of one substance to the same substance through the mole, okay? And we're going to learn it also allows us to relate uh, quantities of other substances um, with relation to the mole as well. So we are going to get started with our first example. And this example here, we're um, being asked how many atoms are in 5.0 grams of copper. Okay, so first things first, how many atoms are in uh, grams of copper. So we're being given the grams, okay? So we're being given grams and we're asked how many atoms. So we're going to be essentially, if you're using this mole map, going from grams to moles using molar mass, and then from moles to the number of particles, i.e. atoms, using Avogadro's number, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. 5.0 grams of copper. And I usually put it over one when I'm doing dimensional analysis. And so I know I need uh, grams to be on bottom. And from using the mole map, I know my connection will be the molar mass. So we'll put uh, 63.55 grams of copper. And that is in one mole of copper. That's what we learned in the last podcast. And um, we want atoms. So I'm going to go ahead and underline that. So the connection here, when you... Uh, hear the terms atoms, particles, photons, molecules, etc. You know you're going to be using Avogadro's number. And in one mole of uh, copper, we have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of copper. Okay, plug and chug time. So go ahead and put this into your calculator. Um, and you should get an answer of two, or excuse me, 4.7 times 10 to the 22nd atoms of copper. Okay, so, and that is with two sig figs. Um, our information here, we have um, minimum two sig figs as well, so uh, that's going to be an acceptable answer here for example number one. Okay, all right. Now we're being asked, what is the mass of the oxygen atom in grams? What is the mass of one oxygen atom? So we're going to have to go through the land of the mole uh, using Avogadro's number and then using molar mass. That's going to enable us to find the grams. And that's what this is asking. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. Um, let's see here. So in uh, one atom of oxygen, go ahead and put that um, over one. And I have atoms on top. I need atoms here of oxygen on bottom. What's my connection? Well, I know that I'm going to be using Avogadro's number times 10 to the 23rd atoms of oxygen, and that is in, in one mole of oxygen, okay? And again, as I've done in the past, I'm going to circle that so I don't uh, take a wrong turn in this uh, land of the mole. And one mole of oxygen and one mole of oxygen. There are 16.00 grams of oxygen. Um, good idea to cancel, make sure everything um, factors out for you. And then this is going to give you an answer of 2.657 times 10 to the negative 23rd grams of oxygen. 
All right, I have four sig figs, four sig figs. So that is gonna be my final answer here for example number two. Okay, um, now we have an entire unit on stoichiometry. This we're gonna be doing something called composition stoichiometry. So, and it makes sense to teach it right now while we're doing multi-step mole conversions. So um, it's, it's dealing with quantitative relationships between elements within a compound. Okay, so um, our third example here, how many moles of hydrogen are in six moles of water? Okay, moles of hydrogen and six moles of water. Okay, so if, if I had um, one dozen uh, waters, uh, you know, one dozen um, molecules of water, there would be one dozen oxygen and there would be two dozen or 24 hydrogen, okay? Um, so hopefully that makes sense. If, if there's, um, in every single molecule of water, there's uh, two hydrogen and one oxygen. So it shouldn't be a far stretch for you to um, say that in every one mole of water, there are two moles of hydrogen and one mole of oxygen. So that's that's basically the concept behind composition stoichiometry. So we're gonna start with moles of water and we're gonna go to um, moles of hydrogen. So 6.0. Actually, let me go ahead and um, take a look at this real quick here. Um, so if you look at the land of map, we have moles of one substance and we're being asked for um, moles of hydrogen. So we're gonna be using Avogadro's number and we're actually going to be going um, between here using something called the mole ratio, okay? Um, and that's that two to one ratio. That's that molar stoichiometric ratio that I just discussed um, in water. So let's see what that looks like here. 6.0 moles H2O over one times. Um, so the idea is, and I'll rewrite it, even though it was over here, for every one mole we have two and we are being asked how many moles of hydrogen specifically. So in one mole of H2O, we have two moles of hydrogen. Okay. And so now we've converted into hydrogen and we're being asked how many moles. And so as you can see here, all we're doing is um, multiplying six times two. And with two sig figs, we get uh, 12 moles of hydrogen. It's that easy. Okay, how many moles of methane are required to get 0 0.860 grams of hydrogen? So we're starting with grams of hydrogen and we want moles of methane. So we're starting with grams of one substance all right, okay, so we're gonna be using molar mass of that substance. And then we're um, being asked how many moles of the methane. So we're gonna use our mole ratio here and end with moles of something else. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, look at what this looks like here. 0 0.860 grams of hydrogen. Uh, put over one here, and so I know I'm going to have grams of hydrogen um, on the bottom. Looking at the mole map, you saw we're going to need the molar mass here. So for um, every, um, let's see, uh, 1.008 grams of hydrogen and one mole 
of hydrogen cancels out times there are four moles of hydrogen in every one mole of methane. And there's that molar ratio we're using here. And now I'm dealing with moles of methane and it's asking for moles of methane. So I am done at this point. Okay, so if you pop this in, plug and chug, you will get 0 0.213 moles of methane. And three sig figs is what I'm going to be using on this particular example. So I'm going to circle it and we're going to call that one good as well. Okay. All right. Example number five. How many oxygen atoms are in 2.5 grams of potassium dichromate? Hopefully you know your polyatomic ions. Hopefully you know your nomenclature at this point. So how many oxygen atoms, so my mind is thinking Avogadro's number, are in 2.5 grams of potassium dichromate? All right, so let's look at our mole map here and see what we're going to start with. We're starting with grams of, of uh, the potassium dichromate. So we're going to be, and it doesn't, it doesn't matter what side I start on. I was B here. We know we're going through the land of the mole. We know we're using mole ratio. So I'll, I'll start with grams of A, I guess. We're going to be using molar mass as well. Then we're going to be using the mole ratio. And it is saying how many atoms, which means I'm going to be using Avogadro's number to get to um, my final answer here. All right. 2.5 grams of potassium dichromate times, and now I'm going to use the molar mass here. And we're going to say that there are, um, let's see, 294.2 grams of um, potassium dichromate in one mole, all right, of potassium dichromate. Um, and then from there, we're going to say, okay, we want how many oxygen atoms, so we're trying to get to oxygen, and then for every one mole of potassium dichromate, there are seven moles of oxygen associated with it. So, in every one mole, and I will go ahead and not have naked numbers here, because otherwise it can be a little hard to follow. And cross, cross, there are seven moles of water and I'm not done yet I still need to use Avogadro's number so in every one mole of um, oxygen there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms and that is what we are trying to get atoms of oxygen all right, so um, go ahead and pop this in your calculator. Uh, think about sig figs and how that's going to play out. And your final answer is going to be 3.6 times 10 to the 22 atoms of oxygen. That's with two sig figs, um, which is what we want here. 3.6 times 10 to the 22. So there's a lot of atoms and two point atoms of oxygen and 2.5 grams of potassium dichromate. All right, example number six here, calcium oxalate. Calcium oxalate is a poisonous compound found in rhubarb leaves. Um, I love rhubarb pie, by the way. If you've ever, if you've never had rhubarb pie, that is a treat. All right, just don't eat the leaves. You actually eat the red part here. So how many moles of carbon are in... 52.4 milligrams of calcium oxalate. So we are starting with grams of this compound here, and we're being asked how many moles of carbon there are. 
All right, so we're starting with grams of one substance. We know we're going to be using the molar mass. Then we're going through the land of the mole um, within this compound. So we'll need the molar ratio to relate to moles and get us over to moles of the other substance. Okay, so um, that's our plan in this case here. So uh, let's go ahead and start with 52.4 milligrams of calcium oxalate okay so calcium oxalate um, has a charge of minus two so that is all balanced there um, and there are 1000 milligrams and one gram those are exact numbers and so um, we can continue on. I know grams is going to go on bottom here, and there's 128.1 grams of calcium oxalate per one mole of calcium oxalate, and then in one mole of calcium oxalate, we have, and let's make sure we're asked for how many moles of carbon. There's two moles of carbon associated with each one. Okay, um, so if we were to make sure, cancel, cancel, milligrams, milligrams, grams, cancel, moles of calcium oxalate, cancel. We're ending with two moles there of carbon, and so you should get 8.18 um, times 10 to the negative 4 moles of carbon here. Okay, as your final answer. Let's do our last example of this podcast. Okay, now, Avogadro, as I alluded to in the last podcast, and we, what we need to be saying again is Lorenzo Romano Amadeo Carlo Avogadro hypothesized that equal volumes of different gases at the same temperature and the same pressure have equal number of particles, okay? That's, um, that I gave a little uh, history lesson in the last podcast and I, I went over that, all right? So you definitely need to jot this down. We will refer to the standard temperature and pressure as STP, and those conditions are at zero degrees Celsius and one atmosphere of pressure. All right, so anytime you see STP, that's what we're dealing with. And under these conditions, the attractive forces in any gases and the size of those gases is, is for the most part, going to be negligible. All right, so they're all going to have um, this occupy this, this same volume. And that number that you need to know and be so familiar with is 22.4 liters. Okay. Now later on in the course, um, we will not always be dealing with STP, but for right now, those are the conditions for STP. And we are going to be using those in this final example here. Okay, so example number seven, what is the mass of 8.0 liters of methane at STP? Okay, mass of methane at STP, and we're starting with liters, okay? Um, and we are starting with liters at STP. Um, so we are going to go into here um, to find the moles of that substance, and then we're being asked for the grams of that substance. So we're going to um, take a hard left turn here and use molar mass to, to get our answer. Okay. All right. So let's knock this one out. 8.0 liters of methane. Okay. At STP, 22.4 liters of any gas at STP is um, one mole, okay? And in one mole of methane, there are um, 16, um, 
we'll just call it 16 grams that works for 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 right now of methane all right boom cancel liters cancel we are told we're at STP, um, which means we are at uh, zero degrees Celsius and one atmosphere of pressure. Plug and chug, 5.7 grams of methane and 8.0 liters of methane at standard temperature and pressure. Okay, so um, we're gonna continue our exploration of the mole. Uh, you have a multi-step mole problem set that you can start working on, and I will see you in class. Thank you.